Welcome along, fans of architectural history. This is Scott Cardinal. And this time around, we're going to travel back in time, and I'm going to tell you the story of the Ansonia. As you know, the reasons for micro lessons such as this is to celebrate the hard work and the great triumphs of visionary people such as builders and architects. It is also to help people understand what the architectural and design elements are when they look at buildings. Also, studying architecture and design can help people increase their powers of observation that can be used in other areas of their lives. So, let's get rolling. The Ansonia is a building on a major bend on Broadway on the Upper West Side of Manhattan in New York City. The exact address is 2109 Broadway. That's between 73rd and 74th Streets. It is visible up and down Broadway in that area, which is just what the builder wanted since he was convinced that it would become the most important street in Manhattan, even eclipsing Fifth Avenue in order to become the Champs-Élysées of New York. Construction of the 17-story hotel began in 1899 and it was completed in 1904. It was originally built as a residential hotel and it remained so for quite a long time. The Ansonia was built by an interesting gentleman named William Earl Dodge Stokes. This guy was rolling in dough because he was a Phelps Dodge copper heir and he was a shareholder in the Ansonia Clock Company. And that was named after his grandfather, the industrialist Anson Green Phelps. In 1895, aged 43, Stokes married 19-year-old Rita Hernandez de Alba Acosta. Legend has it that he saw her photo in a window and he decided he wanted to know who she was and he wanted to marry her. And so he found out who she was and he did just that. She gave birth to a son a while later and then they divorced in 1900 and she got $2 million, which was a record at the time. In 1911, Stokes was shot and wounded by a 22-year-old vaudeville actress who, it had been said, was having a fling with him. But he survived, and he went on to continue living his interesting life, including breeding horses on his farm in Kentucky. Stokes died in 1926 at the age of 74. His obituary said that his estate was worth $8 million. That was a lot of bread back then. Of course, there are also accounts that say he died broke, but stuff like that never makes any sense. I mean, there's always stories about wealthy people and how they died penniless, but they're rarely true. I mean, if anything, he probably just put all of his money in a trust under his son's name. In 1897, Stokes commissioned French architect Paul-Emile Dubois, a French architect, to design for him what would become the grandest hotel in Manhattan. Mr. Du Bois had previously designed and made the ornamental sculptures on the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Interestingly, W.E.D., as his friends called him, listed himself as the architect-in-chief for the Ansonia project, which Mr. Du Bois could not possibly have been too happy about. The Ansonia Hotel opened in 1903, and it cost W.E.D. $3 million dollars. It's been written that there were 350 suites in the hotel and 2,500 rooms. Originally, there were also several restaurants, a bank, a barbershop, a ballroom, a swimming pool, and full hotel services. Stokes had kind of a utopian vision for the Ansonia. He wanted it to be as self-sufficient as possible. And so he put a farm on the roof. And that included about 500 chickens, a whole bunch of ducks, half a dozen goats, and, they say, a small bear. Every day, a bellhop delivered fresh eggs totally for free to all the tenants, and any surplus was sold cheaply to the public in the basement arcade. Unfortunately, the Department of Health shut down the farm in 1907. At the time that it was built, the Ansonia was one of the largest apartment hotels in the world, and it still stands as one of the truly grand buildings on Manhattan's west side. The exterior of the steel frame structure is decorated in the Beau Art style with a Parisian style mansard roof. In his 1956 book, Seize the Day, novelist Saul Bellow wrote, It looks like a Baroque palace from Prague or Munich, enlarged a hundred times, 
with towers, domes, huge swells of metal gone green from exposure, iron fretwork, and festoons. He also added, Under the changes of weather, it may look like marble or seawater, black as slate in the fog, white as tufa in sunlight. Now, let's check out the building. The base is rusticated limestone and originally had entries to a bank on the south, a restaurant in the center, a florist and a druggist on the north side, and over the course of time, these businesses have changed and the central entry is now closed. Bank robber Willie Sutton was arrested for the sixth time, out of eight, two days before Thanksgiving in 1930 while having breakfast at Child's Restaurant in the Ansonia. Mid-block was the ornate entry with an arch that led into the Ansonia's restaurant. On Broadway, as you can see, there are rounded corner towers with ornate railings. Beginning on the ground level are recessed courts on all sides. These were placed there in order to provide light and air into the apartments. And above the three-story rusticated base, you can see a continuous railing constructed of limestone. Now, there's a great deal of lavish terracotta ornamentation, including scrolls and brackets, cornices, and there are leerful, lustful, kind of drunken woodland gods over the doorways. The main entrances to the building are on the side streets. The 73rd Street frontage has a three-bay vaulted garage drive. The middle section begins on the fourth floor, and along the 5th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th floor windows are individual balconies with wrought iron railings. And along the 6th floor level and along a few of the rounded corners can be seen continuous wrought iron railings that adorn the balconies and balconettes. Along the facades are smooth panel surfaces of light colored brickwork. And on the corners are contrasted coins. Now let's check out the top section. It begins on the 13th floor, above a continuous railing constructed of limestone, and at the 15th level begins a three-story convex mansard roof that crowns the Ansonia. On the corners along Broadway can be seen the round corner towers, and the circular cross-section is almost detached from the receding mansard roof. Now check this out. Prior to World War II, each was topped with an elaborate steel tower with a glistening copper dome and a pinnacle at a height of 35 feet above the roof. Unfortunately, the copper cornices were removed during World War II and they were melted down for the war effort. The copper cartouches on the corner domes, each seven feet tall and weighing half a ton, came down. And the cupolas that once crowned the corner towers were also removed. Now let's check out the roof. In the center, there was originally supposed to be a tower that would be reminiscent of the roofscape centerpiece of the Royal Chateau de Chambord in France. It was going to have a steel frame tower 20 feet square and a height of 125 feet above the roof, but unfortunately, it was never completed. The west side of the Ansonia is quite unlike the street-facing facades. The most interesting elements are the ornate bay windows that protrude from the exterior. And as you can imagine, they offer a wider view from inside while enlarging the living spaces. Now very quickly about the interior, inside there is an open stairwell that sweeps up to a dome skylight. And there are elevators on either side. When the Ansonia was built, the interior included the assembly room, the palm garden, the grill room, and a public restaurant with a glass and metal roof. And in the basement, there was a world-famous swimming pool and Turkish baths. Now, as far as the apartments, from the time that the Ansonia was completed, its residents have lived in luxurious apartments with multiple bedrooms and parlors, there are libraries and formal dining rooms, and those are actually often round or oval. 
They all have high ceilings and really elegant moldings. And there are plenty of bay windows. When it was a hotel, long-term residents would rent suites of varying sizes. They could rent a room and a bath, or they could rent up to 30 rooms. And there were some smaller units with one bedroom, a parlor, and a bath. But those didn't have kitchens. But there were serving kitchens on every floor. Like so many other luxury apartment buildings following World War II, many of the grand apartments had been divided into studios and one-bedroom units. Thankfully, they retain their original architectural details. Past and present residents of the building included such famous personalities as Babe Ruth, boxer Jack Dempsey, and members of the White Sox, who were key players in the 1919 Black Sox scandal. Because of its virtually soundproof construction, the Ansonia attracted a lot of musicians and singers, and they included conductor Arturio Toscanini, composer Igor Stravinsky, Sergei Rachmaninoff, and Italian tenor Enrico Caruso. Because of its proximity to New York's legendary theaters, the Ansonia also attracted a lot of entertainers, including Tony Curtis, Geraldine Farrar, Billy Burke, Florence Zegfield, Sarah Bernhardt, and the Ansonia was the childhood home of sisters Constance, Barbara, and Joan Bennett. And if you want to know a little bit more about its interesting history, from 1977 until 1980, the Ansonia Hotel's basement was home to Plato's Retreat, which was an open-door swingers sex club. And prior to Plato's Retreat, the building housed the Continental Baths that was operated by Steve Ostro. It was a gay bathhouse where Bette Medler provided musical entertainment very early in her career. That's why they called her Bathhouse Betty. And do you know who her accompanist was? Barry Manilow. In 1980, the building was inducted to the National Register of Historic Places. In 1992, the Ansonia was converted to a condominium apartment building with 430 apartments. By 2007, most of the rent-controlled apartment tenants had moved out, and the small apartments were sold to buyers, many of whom purchased clusters of small apartments and they brought them together in order to recreate grand apartments. And today, the Ansoni is home to part of the New York campus of the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. And so this concludes this micro-lesson about the Ansonia. If you live in the Ansonia, or you know somebody who does, and you want to invite me over for a coffee or tea, please feel free to shoot me an email. After all, there's nothing wrong with sending some positive vibes into the world and doing something really cool for a stranger. Well, I'm not that much of a stranger, am I? Anyway, if you want to support my research, please sign up for a subscription at my website, audibleadventures.com. That website also has a page with links to all of my books. You could also download the Audible Adventures app for iPhone and Android. If you have any thoughts about this subject matter, please put those in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I wish you safe travels and all your journeys.